Somewhere behind me in the crowd is Sergeant Steve Hoffman, Wainwright's Army News reporter. Steve, over to you. I'm Sergeant Hoffman, and this is Mass Corporal Noiseau, and we are your new Army News team in Wainwright. We're in the combined mess right now, speaking with some of the soldiers who are here. So, hi, right, could you tell me who you are and what you do on the base? Hi, I'm Private Brophy from 35 Service Battalion in Cape Breton, and I'm here as an augmentee in the kitchen doing GDs for the Task Force 107. After this, I'm leaving on the 27th of November, and uh, I'm going back home to my unit in Cape Breton. That's great. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you. Back to you, Sergeant Reed. Thank you, Sergeant Hoffman. We'll check in with you a little later on in the show. So you're going to Wainwright to train and exercise in what the Canadian Maneuver Training Center calls the box. But before you can go into the box, you will require some state-of-the-art electronic equipment that will make the experience the closest thing to real combat here in Canada. Sergeant Mike Vandenbroek has more. So here at CMTC, when you first come to the training area, you go to a place for orientation. At orientation, you get this card. This card has all your information on it. It also has your number on it on where you belong in the organization that you belong to. You then bring this card to the cubic building, and they issue your kit, which we're going to go through now. So they scan your card, and then they start issuing your kit. As you can see, everything is electronically recorded within the computer. Once this information is taken and put into the computer, it then goes up to XCON, where they have it for the entire exercise, and they know exactly where you are. John? Okay, if you'd like to just turn around the side on. The first thing we're going to do is connect a battery. It's a, a, um, a rechargeable lithium battery, which the battery life will last you for a, a minimum of two days. And we have a, uh, a socket here. You must ensure that it fits nice and snug and fully screw the connector all the way home. You keep turning to turn no more. Once the connector's fully there, then place the battery into the design pouch on the back of the attack vest here and fully zip home. You then get the process of the vest start to make its initial noise and it's running through bits. The next thing we do is connect to the umbilical cord, which you should have done before, but <laughs> for the purpose of this. So again, you, you locate the umbilical cord, just put it in and fully ensure it's fully home. It is a snap gate socket as opposed to a screw gate. So if you, this cord gets caught in the tree or vehicle, it will automatically pull apart. Let's go now go through the vest and indicate some of the points on there. On the front of the vest, you have four detectors. On each arm, there's a detector here and on this arm here. And if we turn around again, there's four more detectors on the back. Okay, on the front of the vest, we have here what is termed the harness control unit. We have a scroll button up and down and a select button here. And if you look down now, you can actually see from your own onboard computer information that is either in English or in French and it tells you the status of the vest. If you were to be engaged by enemy fire and you were to be wounded, it would tell you uh, what wound you would actually receive. Other components in the back. In here we have the um, GPS uh, and the speaker and this uh, is a red LED flashing light. So if you were to be engaged most small arms fire, the speaker would emit a beeping noise and this light would flash. Here we have the, the player unit and the player unit antenna. This player unit uh, houses all the computer codes that work with the system and finally the battery pack as we spoke. After your initial issue of your helmet gear and your vest, you move on to have your weapon uh, aligned with the system. I'm here with Ray Fairweather and he's one of the employees here at Cubic. Ray? Yes. Okay, so when you come to the Maytas area, uh, first thing we do is install your SAT taking careful aim at the target unit, which is 12 meters away. The uh, soldier will aim at the, uh, the fluorescent crosshairs. The scope must be on 200, and this weapon is. Okay. Then uh, once they have a steady uh, point of aim, I fit the, dry, or correction, the, uh, the drive unit to the SAT. You still have your point of aim? Yeah. On the crosshairs? Okay then initiate the alignment system. And that chime that you heard there was the, uh, the SAD and the uh, drive unit talking to the target unit saying, right, I'm done. And did you see a red, uh, red lights in the... Uh, I did. You did? That is your indication plus the chimes 
that you are now perfectly aligned. So Ray, if a soldier gets killed electronically, can he still fire his weapon effectively? Uh, no, he will not be able to fire the weapon. The vest will not communicate with the sad as it's in the killed state. However, if another uh, soldier who is alive picks up his weapon and carries on, yes, that soldier will be able to fire. So once you have all your kit, it goes in this bag and you head to the field. The Canadian Maneuver Training Center here in Wainwright is one of the best in the world and to help it they have Weapons Effects Simulation or WES provided by Cubic. This is Sergeant Mike Vandenbroek reporting for Army News, Wainwright, Alberta.